Alcohol is kind of a double hit in this sense. It's causing changes in our brain circuitry and neurochemistry that at the time in which we're inebriated are detrimental. And it's causing changes in neural circuitry that persist long past the time in which we're experiencing the feeling of being tipsy or drunk. Let's address what alcohol is and how it affects the cells and tissues and organs of your body. Then we'll take a look at some of the epidemiology, that is how many people are consuming alcohol and how much they're drinking. And then you'll be able, I think, to get a good sense of how the alcohol that you're drinking is impacting your brain and body and the choices you might want to make about how and when to drink alcohol or even if you want to eliminate alcohol altogether. When you drink alcohol, it can pass into all the cells and tissues of your body. It has no trouble just passing right into those cells. So unlike a lot of substances and drugs that actually attach to the surface of cells, to receptors as they're called, little parking spots, and then trigger a bunch of downstreams, like domino cascades of effects, alcohol actually has its own direct effects on cells because it can really just pass into those cells. So the key thing to understand is that when people drink, the prefrontal cortex and top-down inhibition is diminished. That is, habitual behavior and impulsive behavior starts to increase. Now, what's interesting is this is true in the short term, so after people have one or two, maybe three or four drinks, but it's also true that the more often that people drink, there are changes in the very circuits that underlie habitual and impulsive behavior. Okay, this is really important to highlight, so much so that I wanna drill into it a little bit more deeply. Where the person that drinks, say, every Thursday night, every Friday night or goes out only on Saturdays, but every Saturday. There's evidence that there are changes in the neural circuits of the brain that control habitual behavior and impulsive behavior. And they are modified and strengthened in ways that make those people more habitual and more impulsive outside the times in which they are drinking. And when they drink, impulsive and habitual behavior tends to increase even further. This is something that's not often talked about when discussing the effects of alcohol. And we all know the effects of being drunk can be bad, right? Can be bad in terms of judgment, motor coordination, certainly driving drunk is a terrible thing. But rarely do we hear about the changes in neural circuits from just one or two nights of regular drinking. Again, chronic drinking doesn't necessarily mean every day and every night. It could be the person that simply drinks every Thursday or every Friday, or just once a week has three or four drinks or maybe even a few more. That person is going to experience a decrease in this top-down inhibition, so an increase in impulsivity and habitual behavior because the break on those behaviors has been removed while they're drinking, but also changes in the very neural circuits that allow habitual and impulsive behavior to occur more readily even when they're not drinking. Fortunately, it is reversible. So in animals or humans that undertake a period of abstinence of anywhere from two to six months, these neural circuits re return to normal, except in cases where people have been chronically drinking large volumes of alcohol for many, many years. And in those cases, while there is some recovery of brain circuitry, people get sober, meaning completely sober, they stop drinking entirely. There is evidence of long lasting impact of heavy alcohol usage throughout the lifespan. But of course, this doesn't mean that anyone that's suffering from alcoholism or that used to should not continue to focus on their health. You absolutely should. All is not lost. But for people that have been drinking for a lot of years, maybe you went to college and you drank a lot in those years and your neural circuits change. If there's a period in which you don't drink alcohol, again, from two to six months and ideally longer, those neural circuits can then be remodified back to their original state. There are also dramatic changes in the activity of neurons that control the release of so-called serotonin. Serotonin is a neuromodulator. It changes the activity of neural circuits and many neural circuits, in particular those involved in mood and feelings of well-being. Many of the circuits in the brain that are involved in mood and feelings of well-being and also sort of self-image and how we see ourselves employ the neuromodulator serotonin and alcohol, when we ingest the toxic effects of alcohol, disrupt those mood circuitries, at first making them hyperactive. That's right, making them hyperactive. This is why people become really talkative. People start to feel really good after a few sips of alcohol, at least most people do. And then as they can ingest more alcohol, or as that alcohol wears off, serotonin levels and the activity of those circuits really starts to drop. And that's why people feel less good. And typically what they do, they go and get another drink and they attempt to kind of restore that feeling of well-being and mood. Now, typically what happens is that as people ingest the third and fourth, maybe even the fifth drink, 
there's an absolute zero chance of them recovering that energized mood, right? Most people, as they drink more and more, will now start to feel more and more suppressed. The forebrain is now shutting down quite a lot. A lot of the motor cortical areas that control coordinated movement and deliberate movement start to shut down. So people start to slur their speech. People start to shuffle their feet. People forget their posture. People start to lean on things. People start passing out on couches. There's a great depression, not depression of the psychiatric depression sort, but a depression of alertness and arousal. And eventually people will pass out. People who drink regularly, so this again could be just one or two drinks per night, or it could be somebody that drinks just on Fridays or just on Saturdays, or maybe just on the weekend, two to four drinks. Well, those people experience changes in their hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis that result in more cortisol, more of this so-called stress hormone being released at baseline when they are not drinking. This is really important. People who drink a bit, and when I say a bit, I don't mean one or two sips or even a glass of wine every once in a while. I mean, again, people that are maybe having one drink a night with dinner and maybe on the weekend a few more. All of those groups experience increases in cortisol release from their adrenal glands when they are not drinking. And as a consequence, they feel more stressed and more anxiety when they aren't drinking. This is a seldom talked about effect of alcohol because so often we hear about the immediate effects of alcohol, right? And we've been talking about some of those effects. Effects like reducing the amount of stress. I mean, how many times have we heard somebody say, oh, I need a drink, and then they have a drink, and they're like, calm down. Now they can shake off the thoughts about the day's work. They can start to think about things in a maybe more grounded or rational way, or at least they believe that, or they can somehow just relax themselves. Well. While that very well may be true, that it can relax them, when they are not drinking, that level of cortisol that's released at baseline has increased substantially. Alcohol is kind of a double hit in this sense. It's causing changes in our brain circuitry and neurochemistry that at the time in which we're inebriated are detrimental. And it's causing changes in neural circuitry that persist long past the time in which we're experiencing the feeling of being tipsy or drunk. Now, again, I don't want to demonize alcohol. I'm not saying, oh, you know, if you have a glass of wine now and again, or you drink a beer now and again, or even have, um, you know, a mixed drink now and again, or a shot, that that's necessarily terrible for you. I certainly do not want that to be the message. What I'm saying is that if people are ingesting alcohol chronically, even if it's not every night, there are well-recognized changes in neural circuits, there are well-recognized changes in neurochemistry within the brain, and there are well-recognized changes in the brain-to-body stress system that generally point in three directions. Increased stress when people are not drinking, diminished mood and feelings of well-being when people are not drinking, and changes in the neural circuitry that cause people to want to drink even more in order to get just back to baseline or the place that they were in terms of their stress modulation and in terms of their feelings of mood before they ever started drinking in the first place. So again, I don't wanna de demonize alcohol, but I do want to emphasize that there are long-term plastic changes, meaning changes in neural circuitry and hormone circuitry that across a period of several months and certainly across a period of years of the sorts of drinking patterns I described, very clear that those sorts of drinking patterns are changing neural circuitry and they're changing hormone circuitry. And I'd love to be able to tell you that they're changing them for the better, but they simply are not. They're actually changing them for the worse. And worse is defined as making people less resilient to stress, higher levels of baseline stress, and lower mood overall.